If you want to lose your grasp on reality and destroy your complete sanity, just listen to the clock. But this will not be easy, let me tell you right now. This is not something to mess around with. It's just an easy way to lose your mind within the confines of your own home. But there are a couple guidelines to follow. First, pick a room with no windows. It can be a room for anything, but it just can't have windows. Second, you can start at any time in the day, even if you wish to start at night, for the process will take exactly 24 hours to complete. Third, cancel all appointments you have for that day. Turn off your phone if you have to, for there can't be any distractions for you to focus on. Fourth, Make sure it is a calm and quiet day outside, and not windy or stormy. Lastly, to start the process, you must go into the room you've picked. Put a clock inside. The clock must make a distinct tick-tock sound when every second passes. Turn off the lights and light a candle. That candle will be your only source of light. Once you have done all of that, I honestly want you to ask yourself one question. Do I really want to do this? If your answer is yes, then may God have mercy on you. I'm here to merely prepare you on what to expect. Alright, let me tell you a little bit of information about the procedure. Back in the mid-1800s, radical members of the Christian and Islamic faith used it as a way to connect with God. It was kept under wraps due to its extreme nature, an unusual method to connect with the supernatural. During the procedure, they would have been in constant prayer and worship, but would eventually stop due to the events that would happen afterwards. The clock represented life on earth, and how short it can be, and the candle represented God as the only way of guidance through life. More often than not, each person would go through the procedure, lose their minds, and within a day, would kill themselves from what they have claimed to see. But if you were one of the lucky ones, you can keep your sanity, like me. Okay, now here's what to expect. The first three hours are the least eventful, mainly because nothing really happens. But prepare yourself in these hours. These are the only hours in which you may choose to leave the procedure. In the fourth hour, you will not be able to escape by any means. The lock on your door will lock by itself and you will have no methods to move it. In the fifth hour, you will start to sweat profusely and will start to have feelings of anxiety. You will start to look behind you many times and every time there will be nothing there. In the sixth hour, you will hear noises. Not noises from the house or from outside, but fuds and thumps throughout the hour in 10 minute intervals with each noise getting louder. In the seventh hour, you will pass out and dream. This will be the only pleasant hour throughout the process. You will dream about the best moments in your life. Every great accomplishment, wonderful memory, and friends you have made will appear before you. It will have been the best dream you have ever had in your life. Even events from the future can appear. At the beginning of the eighth hour, you shall wake up. When you do, you will feel an extreme sense of elation and comfort, similar to the effects of smoking marijuana. Now, for some this can be considered another pleasant hour due to the feeling of the drug, but what comes after will be the start of your suffering. In the ninth hour, you will, in a sense, go from one drug to another. Your feelings of happiness 
will change to that of extreme adrenaline and energy, similar to the effects of any stimulant. But a warning, you must try your hardest to keep yourself under control. You are unpredictable. There is no telling what you will do in this state. On the tenth hour, you've hopefully had minimal injuries from the last hour, but you will start to feel normal and your feelings you've previously felt will subside. Now you will hear screaming, but the screaming can vary from what it sounds like, from a little girl to a firm grown man. You will hear screaming at six minute intervals throughout the hour. This hour is going to feel like an eternity to pass. At the eleventh hour, the light from the candle will go out. That's it. You're left alone in the darkness. You are free to think to yourself, most likely regretting the decision you have made. At the twelfth hour, the light from the candle will reappear. But do not worry, this is another hour of silence. But mentally prepare yourself for what is about to happen next. On the thirteenth hour, you shall pass out much like you did during the seventh hour, but don't expect happy memories. In this dream, you shall experience every painful, heart-wrenching moment, suffering and unpleasant things in your life, even suffering in your future, including your own death. This will be the worst dream you have ever had in your life. At the fourteenth hour, you will wake up. This is another hour of silence, but the silence will be broken by your own sobbing. Your tears shall continue until the hour is over. On the fifteenth hour, putting it very bluntly, is when things start to get weird. You will talk to someone. He's not visible, but he's there. He doesn't have a name, but I'm giving him one. He is your guardian angel, but you can call him watcher or protector. But for me, I call him asshole. This may seem funny, but trust me, it suits him. The first thing he will say to you is, Ask me anything, and I shall give you an answer. You can ask him anything about your life, what will happen in the future, and why events occurred the way they did. He will give you an answer, but in extreme and graphic details, and give reasons for things you will not understand, whether it be a tragedy or a death. By the end of the hour, he will say farewell and leave. On the sixteenth hour, you will talk to your parents, but they do not make a physical appearance, mind you. Now it's your turn to answer questions. They will ask you questions about what you have done with your life, and if you do not answer one of their questions, they will press on for an answer until you can't take it anymore. At the end of the hour, they will go away. On the seventeenth hour, you will talk to the most important person in your life. He will ask you why and how you became friends, but keep in mind he is not looking for friendly conversation. He is questioning your friendship with him, finding every mistake you have done to cripple your friendship. Reasoning with him will not work, and he will act like your parents did during the previous hour. On the 18th hour, you will speak to the most important girl in your life. She will do the same as the person in the 17th hour, and ask the same questions. On the 19th hour, you will talk of yourself, meaning you will talk of your future self. And trust me, this is the least pleasant conversation. He will tell you things you will not want to hear about yourself, and will ask you questions you can and cannot answer. Soon it will be too much, and you will find yourself screaming at yourself. Anger and self-loving will be the only emotion you have. On the 20th hour, following the events of the 19th hour, 
you will find any possibility to hurt yourself. Self-inflicting pain will be constant in this hour. Some have even committed suicide. On the 21st hour, if you manage to survive the previous hour, here is what will await you. Music? Yes, music. It will be soft orchestral music of a choir singing Gregorian chant, similar to church music, but more beautiful. By the end of this hour, your wounds will heal. Don't ask me why, even I don't know. On the 22nd hour, the music will stop. This is another hour of silence, but you will have time to think to yourself. The light on the candle will change colors, all colors of the spectrum. This is quite a sight to behold. It's almost soothing. On the 23rd hour, you will sing Gregorian chant, but your singing will be the only sound in the room. You honestly don't know what you're singing, but it sounds beautiful, and you will actually want to sing more. Finally, the 24th hour. This is the most interesting hour. Rumor says you talk to God himself, but here's how it goes. You are pinned to the floor by some unknown force, and someone or something asks you a question at 10 minute intervals. Questions like, are you happy? Or, would you like to change? You must answer. You will feel the need to. The questioner sounds like a man, but at the same time, an animal. Almost like the roar of a lion. His voice is terrifying, but yet comforting at the same time. After the hour is up, you will be able to get up from the floor and the door will unlock. If you're lucky, you still will have your sanity. Now, it is up to you what you shall do with this information. If you want to do this, I'm not stopping you, but I'm giving you fair warning. Some things are beyond the realms of human comprehension, and some things we just have nothing to explain the unnatural. But whatever it is, at least we know we are not alone. Now remember what I have told you. If you want to lose your grip on reality and destroy your complete sanity, just listen to the clock.